Okay, uh, what I want to talk about now is power. I have been, I have introduced three equations for power, two mechanical and one electrical. And uh, as I've been giving lectures to my sons, I was finding that all, everything I was doing was always coming down to these power equations. And what I want to tell you guys is it really is these three equations that feed in, the three different equations, one for translating mechanical energy, one for rotating, and then one for electrical, are the three basis of everything we're going to do with oil and hydrocarbons and, and energy because what else is there? There's the ability to do something continuously. And that's, if there's one thing I want you to learn or remember from this talk is that the only thing that gives you power is if you can keep doing things continuously per time. It has to be a time dimension to power. It has to go on and on and on. When I hear the United States say it's a superpower, I, the minute I hear the word power, I think of per time. So do I believe that the United States will can always have the, the output of productivity and the, the thriving of society it, over a long period of time? Do, are we really a superpower? Do, can we stand the test of time? Can we survive without oil? So the, the word power, the minute I hear that word, I, I, alarms go off in my head saying this means forever, this means time. So let's go down to an equation, the, the first equation I introduced for power, which is force times distance over time, T. And um, we did an example here where we had 550 pounds per foot per second to describe as one horsepower. And here, what we do is we have the, the force pushing, which is the pounds, 550 pounds. The distance is one foot, and the time was one second. So this equation, force time distance over time, does fit with the one that we use for horses. Now, the thing that my dad would always do is he, he played a joke on me, or he didn't play a joke, but he taught me something that I never forgot. He would have me go up to the refrigerator in the house, and he said, you know, move it, just give it a, move this refrigerator. So I would push on the refrigerator, and it wouldn't move. I was small and a big refrigerator. And he would say, well, you, you, you had no work. So force times distance is equal to work. You, without moving that refrigerator, I did no work. Now, there's a concept of moving that refrigerator maybe a foot and then I would have done some work and then if I wanted to have power I would have to move that refrigerator constantly I would have to push on it every second for example I'd have to move it another foot and another foot and another foot so you can do work where you move something through a distance but until you actually do that continuously you don't have power now I have been I've been using loose words all through these discussions because I wanted I wanted to communicate something like putting power into a battery, but you don't really put power into a battery because it's not, you don't go continuously. You, you put it in uh, an amount of energy and then you leave it there. So it's, I've been, I've been sloppy through the discussions, but I intentionally was. I didn't want to burden you with the fact that power has to have a continuous, never ending dimension to it. Okay, so back to that refrigerator. I didn't get it to move, so I didn't do any work. So I didn't have any, there was no power, there was, it, it, it was futile. Now, reality is I actually did bend the metal and it did flex a little bit. So any force that you do apply to something, you, it will move at some level. So, but the trick was without any movement, you do no work. Okay, now if, if you have, right now we've done everything with um, just like a piston going up and down. That was a, this is a formula for translation where things just kind of go in a straight line, but you could have a, a, an equation where the, the path went like this, so the distance were, was wobbling and you were pushing on it this way, and you were moving it through a serpentine path. If you have something like this, then you have to use calculus, um, it, where the path is wobbly, and that, that's the application of calculus, which you use, start learning at senior in high school and beyond. But any, if you have simple straight lines, we don't have to do calculus, we can, do, we can just take the, the parameter and multiply it in. Okay, now the second equation 
or for or power is rotational power. So um, in this case, I slipped in I slipped in horsepower calculation into the um, talk about the power steam plant, and I said that the power steam plant, the, gen the, the steam turbine was turning at 3,600 RPM revolutions per minute, and that it was a, it was providing a torque on the generator, and that was, that generator was turning and popping out electricity. Well, the thing I didn't mention is that those magnets in that generator, they don't want to turn. They're they're happy where they are, and you've got to put power into it to make it turn. You have to put, you have to have torque on a thing that's spinning at 3600. We wanted that spinning at the speed of 60 hertz, 60 times a second, because that's the, we haven't gone into this, but that is a magic number, 60 times a second um, of, of uh, the rate of electricity moving in your house. And you have to put a torque on that shaft and that power makes those magnets that don't want to turn, turn and generate electricity. So this is rotational, which we can measure at the shaft at the back of an engine or the wheels of a car. So the other one, once again, we had translational, which is straight line, unless it's curvy, which we don't do any calculus on, rotational. And then the last one is our friend electrical. That was a, that was a pretty straightforward one. We had voltage times current equal to power. And we had, if you remember, the 120 watt, 120 volt house, and we had a 10 amp circuit, and that was 1,200 watts. Now I said we get, we have to have a time dimension to these things. If you don't have time, you don't have power. So amperage is actually a equivalent to a thing called coulombs. Coulombs. Oh my God! I hope I can spell it. Per second, it's equal to amps. And coulombs are like a pile of electrons. So we're into electricity now. So if you if you have a big pile of electrons and you want to move them every second, that's that gives you this time dimension to this equation. This remember this is a potential energy like a waterfall, and this is the flow, and this is a constant flow of coulombs over the waterfall, which is measured in amps, and then that's the watts are comparable. You can convert watts into horsepower. So these are the these are the equations that are power and we have three of them and there aren't any others. Those are the big three. This the nice thing about this electrical is that we've only got one equation. It's it's very straightforward. Now we're gonna dig deep into this equation. There's a lot when you're talking about electricity, there's a lot going on with electricity that uh, we're gonna have to work on but it all comes back to power, and that's the whole, that's the whole kit and caboodle of, um, of what we're talking about in this oil depletion, running out of power. That's it.